Florida Maki, is psychological operations really as prevalent as you make it out to be? And is it really that important? I get asked this question virtually every day. And the short answer is yes to both. It is that important that people understand this, and it is more prevalent now than it has ever been. To answer in specifics, never in history has it been so easy for people to command large audiences and influence them. It's because of the internet. And if you don't have a command of the basics of psychological operations, it doesn't matter how many weapons you have, how much ammunition you have stockpiled, how much food you have, how far out in the country you are, how much medical knowledge you have, all of that survival stuff, if you don't have control of your own mind or can understand when people are trying to manipulate it, all of that will be taken away from you. We are commanded in the Bible not to have the feelings or the emotions of Christ, we are commanded to have the mind of Christ. And if he did one thing, he exposed those while he was on this earth who were attempting to manipulate others, those who were disingenuous, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, before we get into today's video where I have an excellent, an excellent example of this, I would like to always maintain an attitude of gratitude. I'm thankful every day for the very little bit that I have. I have more than so many. It's hard to say it in, that, in those terms that it's very little bit. Compared to a lot of people, especially here in Florida, I don't have very much, but I am thankful for that which I have. And I'm going to express that every day, and especially you guys, because you guys make it happen. You guys and your support, showing up here every day, watching the videos, liking, sharing, subscribing, those at the Patreon channel, all of you make my life happen, and for what it is, whatever it is, I am thankful to God every day. And if the last week or two and all the things that we've talked about has could serve any good purpose, it would be this, that it would remind me, every day be grateful, every day be thankful. Things are not always going to be perfect, whether in government or anywhere else, but it's important to express gratitude. For those of you that would like to help support financially, if you can, I could sure use it. Things here on YouTube are not great for anyone. It's only one US dollar over at the Patreon channel. That's it per month. Comes out to like three pennies a day. It's even less if you sign up for an entire year. Fully refundable first 90 days. We can partner the Vimeo. We can take the gloves off. We can show images like we used to be able to show. Not to be gratuitous, but to prove a point. And that's what I'm thankful for Vimeo for. So thank you, everyone who's done that. Thank you to everyone who's here. I'm thankful for both of you. But it's, you know, one of those things that the constant engagement is what keeps me alive, keeps me floating. And I very, very much appreciate all of it. Now, without any further delay, three and a half minutes in, let's get to, oh, real quick, real quick. Today is the day. Today is the day. If you're over at Patreon... Check your inbox. I drew the two names and I sent out the two messages earlier. And I'm not going to announce the names here until I get some permission from those people, of course, for privacy sake, to announce the names. But both names, uh, one guy, one girl, have gotten the last two Florida Maquis coffee mugs. So could be you. So let's get right to the video. There's a story out there, and it's a fairly common one. We've heard different iterations of this story, but a lot of people would end up having some type of an emotional response to it. Female U.S. Army commandos face harassment report. A new study has found that many male soldiers are reluctant or outright opposed to accepting women in Special Forces units. News at 11, right? Women serving in U.S. Army, Spec Ops, continue to face discrimination, sexual harassment, sexism in their male-dominated units. According to a new report, Pentagon opened all combat jobs to women eight years ago in a lengthy study conducted in 2021 but released only now. Um, U.S. Army Special Operations Command found that many male soldiers continue to make overtly sexist comments aimed at their female counterparts and express broad aversion to women serving in commando units. 
Here's a quote from one of them. The idea that women are equally as physically, mentally, and emotionally capable as men to effectively perform the majority of jobs within spec ops is, quite frankly, ridiculous. So, whatever your opinion is on this, whether you think it's a good idea, whether you think it's a bad idea, the idea is a different one than what you would take away. Is serving in special operations a right? Meaning, is it about the soldier? Or is the soldier a servant? Shouldn't the consideration be, what's best serving the country? When I was in, the U.S. military could put you, whether you were a man or whether you were a woman, anywhere they thought it was good, not for you, not for your future, not for your development, whatever was good for the military. You might have wanted to be this thing over here because you thought it was cool. You know, maybe it was a field artillery. Maybe you wanted to be infantry. Maybe you wanted to be something else. But if they thought you were better suited for this other job over here and that served the army better or served the military in general, meaning serving the country better, then that's what you did because it was service-based. It wasn't about you. So regardless of the discomfort of the male soldier or regardless of the discomfort of the female soldier in the spec ops unit, neither is relevant. Neither is relevant. Now you might agree with the male soldier that women can't do it and you might agree with the female soldier that they shouldn't be harassed. Newsflash, male soldiers harass each other. That's part of it. That's part of staying frosty. If you're going to put your life in someone else's hands, you want to kind of, you know, Make sure that that person isn't going to collapse under a little bit of harassment. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Neither neither opinion matters, but nobody sees it. They see a a story like this and they think, well, gosh, I've got to come down on either one side or the other. Both sides are irrelevant. Because a soldier is a servant. That's why we call it serving your country. So... You could be the best special operations soldier out there, but if the U.S. Army or any other branch thought that you were better suited somewhere else or they had more of a need somewhere else, guess where you're going? You're going to go where they have need. If they have need of cooks, you're going to be a cook. They don't have, you know, if they got plenty of spec ops people and, you know, you're just, you know, the low man on the totem pole that day, that's what you're going to do. Now, Keep that same energy, keep that same idea about service and serving the country and not about the servant. It's not about what the servant wants. It's not about what's good for the servant or what the servant's needs are. It's about the country's needs. Truth Social, Donald Trump's own platform. So nobody can say that I cherry picked something that you know, was anti-Trump. I'm going to show you something from his own platform that's going to blow your mind. It's going to absolutely blow your mind. Okay, here's his Truth Social platform. I follow Donald Trump on Truth Truth Social. He has, where is it? The most recent poll. This one election is election betting odds, not an actual poll. But the most recent poll he's put up is interactive polls, IA polls 2022, South Carolina 2024, Trump holds 34-point lead for Republican nomination. Now, this is Donald Trump. One day ago, it shows him at 48%. And he shows all these other smaller numbers, but I don't think he did the thought work on this. It shows all of the other numbers adding up to 52. So what does that tell you? 52% in South Carolina, wants somebody, anybody, other than Donald Trump. DeSantis, Scott, Haley, Christie, Ramsway, Pence, if you add up all these numbers, because here's the here's the PSYOP part. People say Florida Monkey, PSYOPs, it's not always out there. It is, because if you think about it, if your first choice was Tim Scott, your second choice is not Donald Trump. If your first choice is Tim Scott, your second choice is not going to be Donald Trump. Same thing with Nikki Haley, all of these other people. If this is their first choice, Trump would be second to no one. 
Trump is nobody's second choice. So when you add up 14, 14, 8, 7, 6, and 2, it actually comes to 51. But it's a 51, 48. Now, I don't think he, he saw this in this context. To put a better point on this, wait until you see this. This is the part that's going to drive you absolutely insane. Down here, when you scroll down even farther, he talks about, after you get all that, Donald Trump, a must-watch part one of two, a must-watch part two of two. It's Mark Levin and Life, Liberty, and Levin on Fox News. And you think, well, what's, it's probably something where he supports Donald Trump. Guys, Mark Levin, and you can look this up if you think I'm lying. Mark Levin is for the war in Ukraine. He's pro-Ukraine. Mark Levin, still to this day, stands with George W. Bush and the WMD thing in Iraq. You can look that up. That's fact. Supporter of George W. Bush. Mark Levin has taken three quarters of a million dollars, $757,000, from the Cook brothers. Fact. Mark Levin was a never-Trumper who endorsed Ted Cruz in 2016. Backed. In fact, he said some very denigrating things about Donald Trump in 2016. Mark Levin, of course, being Jewish, stands with Israel with no qualification whatsoever. Mark Levin also supports a guy named Mo Brooks. Mo Brooks used to support Donald Trump. Donald Trump supported Mo Brooks. In May 2018, during the Republican primary for Brooks' seat, he said he was a Trump supporter in response to accusation from his opponents that Brooks had previously criticized Trump. Trump endorsed Brooks 2018 re-election, saying Brooks, now this is Donald Trump's words, Brooks fought by my side to secure our border, rebuild our military, cut our taxes, repeal Obamacare, and build the wall. Brooks also opposed Trump's first impeachment, March 25, 2019. Shortly after Barr summary of the Mueller report, Brooks read a passage from, from Mein Kampf. So he stood with him. 20, 20, April 2021, Trump announced his endorsement of Brooks' 2022 Senate campaign. In March 2022, Trump rescinded his endorsement because Brooks refused to get, along, get on board with removing Joe Biden. Now, since his loss in the 2022 U.S. Senate race, Brooks has been critical of Trump. He has argued that 2024 election will have candidates who are vastly superior to Trump and more directly attacked him as dishonest, disloyal, incompetent, and crude and has suggested that the current charges against the president have merit. Now, this guy supports Mo Brooks. This guy supports Mo Brooks, but Donald Trump has this guy on his own Truth Social page promoting him. How many of you out there have said, I'm not going to vote for DeSantis because he's tied to the Cook brothers, or he supports George Bush, or he has this, this other connection to some, to oh, to Israel. Oh, remember Israel? We, we don't support DeSantis because he's supporting Israel. There's literally a picture of Donald Trump kissing the Wailing Wall, but nevertheless, and talking about how he's the king of Israel, and also talking about how he's the, you know, the, the biggest supporter of Israel ever, but that's a reason to not vote for Ron DeSantis. I mean, I could give you six, and what's the psyop here? I could give you five or six or seven things that you, you as a voter, would disagree with that Trump is supporting. This being one of them. Only because of one reason. Now, here's the part that's going to drive you crazy. Ready for this? 16 Trump cabinet secretaries and federal agency heads with Cook ties, the Cook brothers, Mike Pompeo, Rick Perry, Betsy DeVos, Tom Price, Scott Gottlieb, Scott Pruitt, Naomi Rio, Ryan Zinke, Wilbur Ross, Linda McMahon, Maureen Olhausen, Noel Francisco, Nikki Haley, Alexandra Acosta, Ben Carson, and Elaine Chow. This was going back to 2017 and 18, guys. So this would be my question. Is it about you or is it about him? Just like the story, just like the story here, is it about the soldier? 
Or is it about the country? Of course, it's about the country, isn't it? The military is there to serve the country. Politicians are just another flavor of public servant. Here on his own page, Donald Trump's own page, he's promoting Mark Levin. Laundry list of things that most people are anti-DeSantis because of that Mark Levin is right on board with. Especially the support of George W. Bush. The support. What was the statement he made? Hold on. WMDs in Iraq, Donald Trump. In March 2016, Levin endorsed Ted Cruz over a month after Don, over a month after Donald Trump was nominated in September 16. Levin stated on his radio program that he would he would vote for Trump if he had to, following his declaration earlier that he was in the never Trump camp and would never vote for Trump. He qualified his support by stating, I take no responsibility for the dumb things he says or the dumb things his surrogates say. And you can, you can go down and look at all of this information about who Mark Levin is. You know, and what he supports and what he believes and, and what he has said and what he has done. And this guy is being supported by Donald Trump on Donald Trump's own Truth Social page. You see, it's the part that should make your head hurt. Because it will cause some level of cognitive dissonance. Like, wait a minute, I thought I thought Trump would get us out of Ukraine. I, th- I didn't think Trump liked George Bush. Well, it's, it doesn't matter if, if this guy is UI, if he's a useful idiot. Trump will use him. Trump will use him for whatever he needs to use him for. And then six months from now, he'll completely disavow it. Does that serve you? You know, especially the, the attachment to the Cook brothers. This is the crazy part. So the two stories go exactly together. They go exactly rightly together that it doesn't matter about the opinion of the female soldier. It doesn't matter about the opinion of the male soldier, who got harassed or who said what. What's good for the military? Because that serves us. Whatever is good for the military, whatever makes those wheels spin better and they can get their job done in the most efficient way, whatever gets that job done, that's fine. You go through spec op training and you shine and you graduate the top of your class and they need you to change tires, you're going to change tires. That's what you're going to do if that's what they need. They can't find enough tire changers or burger flippers or dishwashers or accountants or whatever the military needs. This was always the case. In fact, it's in every contract. That you, yes, you can choose an MOS. And we know if this is what you want to do, MOS in the Army, Military, Occupational Specialty. I know you guys in the Navy and the Marines, you have a different term for it. But you can choose a job. And that's fine. And as long as everything works out and they have a need for that and you fit in that slot, then that's great. But if they have need, if they have need and you can do it, guess what you're going to do? That should be the attitude of our politicians, shouldn't it? What's good for the country? It's not what good. It's not what's good for this senator or that congressman or this presidential candidate or that. Should be what's good for us. None of it should have any any uh, bearing on what's what's good for the candidate. So just think about that when you see stuff like this. Is this guy really about me? Is he about what's good for the country or is he about himself? Is he just using us as useful idiots to get what he wants? Because I don't know how else you would explain this. If there's a, a logic argument you can make that says, I was cheated out of the election and the whole system is rigged against me, but I still need you to vote in the rigged election that is skewed against me, if there's a logic argument there that I'm missing, please let me know. I I can't uh, I can't just if you if you thought football team analogy I'll leave with this. You go and you play a football game as a team against another football team, and the refs call everything on you guys, 
and nothing on the other team, and you can tell they're in their pocket. And no matter what you do, every play gets called back, and you lose the game completely unfairly. Would you ever schedule another game with that team again? Would you ever tell your supporters to go out and sit in the stands in freezing cold weather to watch you play a game that was already rigged against you? Why would you encourage people? Only one of two things can be true. Either voting matters and you should go vote for Donald Trump, or voting doesn't matter like he says and it isn't going to matter what you do anyway. So how can he make one claim but then occur, encourage you to go do something else that counters that claim? Has anybody ever asked him that? That's the only reason I would want him at the debate. It would be the one question I would ask him. Mr. President, with respect, sir, you have said that you believe the system is rigged. Dominion voting machines, you know, magical thumb drives that can just be popped in and can just flip things no matter what. You said this is the case and it's totally rigged. And the system is entirely rigged against you. And there's, there's, you know, it's just, that's why you're not president now. Why then do you think it would matter who the nominee was in 2024 for the Republican Party? And why voting would matter in general? How do you, how do you resolve the logic argument here? That's what I don't get. So I will leave it there. But God bless all of you. Thank you so much for being here. I very, very much appreciate it. Those of you who are Patreon, you guys are absolutely amazing. Would love to have you. I know a lot of you out there, it's like, well, $1 doesn't seem like it would make a big deal. It does. It does when people show up. And because there's a kind of revolving door over there. There's, there's folks that, you know, they leave for one reason or another. Maybe I say something they don't like, or they see an image they don't like, or their financial situ situation changes. So every month there are people that say, gosh, I, I supported you as long as I could. Thank you. And then there's a whole other group of people that shows up and takes their place. So God bless. And that's how I know God's hand is in, in this. Pray for me. I will pray for you and pray for each other. God bless. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.